Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, friends. Happy Tuesday. As you can tell, it's my birthday. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Hello, cat. Good morning, good morning. Thank you so much. Oh, hi, baby. I'm coming to hang out. Ah, uh, excuse you. You can't lick the butter. <laughs> thank you, thank you. What are you doing? Hello. But yeah, I changed the music halfway through. We'll see. We're also coming to you now from our new fiber internet. So hopefully, it's meant to be harder, better, faster, stronger. So hopefully, it is. <laughs> What are you doing? Hello. Can I see you? I don't even know where you are. Yeah. You having you having a rough time? You can't have them. I'm sorry. They're for baking. <laughs> but yes. So as the name suggests, we are tackling butter tarts today. You can't have the butter shadow. Push these all out of the way for you. Yeah. I can give you a treat though. Here, do you want a treat? I'll give you a meat stick. Here you go. Hopefully that will pacify him for now. Um, but yeah, so today the plan is butter tarts. So we have the tart section here. We have the butter filling section over here and various utensils and appliances over there. Um, but yeah, hopefully this is our first time like doing a pie crust situation and I know that they really need to stay cold um which i'm a bit concerned usually i feel like i'm quite cold like i'm quite chilly um but the sun is out now and we're doing things we've never done before so i think my hands might get a little bit uh clammy perhaps there's a possibility oh, i just realized this might not be on the right thing Damn. Did I put it on the new one? No, I didn't. That's fine. It's fine. Whoops. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Okay. So, how are you gonna are you gonna supervise the stream today, Shadow? Okay. Okay. That's fine. Might as well get started. So this is also an American recipe. I'm putting in about 85k. Ooh, that comes from <laughs> Yeah, no problem. Yeah, no problem. That's all good. I appreciate. You know, I love a good work lurk. So I just realized too, though, that I think this is on the wrong internet. Yeah, it is. So we need to actually. So give me two ticks, and I need to set this up. So give me a second. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So now that's gonna be hooked up to the right network. And so now everything should be working because it wasn't earlier and that was not good. Okay. And then we'll jump into all of the things. Okay, now everything, yes, everything is now up to date, hunky dory, good to go. Okay, so yes, this is a, a recipe because one of the things that I've noticed about baking in the UK versus elsewhere is they like to use weight, which I've been told is actually a better measurement for stuff. Um, but this recipe is doing like cups and teaspoons, tablespoons, whatever. So we're just gonna do what they say and see how it goes. So first we're gonna make our pie crust and we need a three quarter cup of all purpose flour. That's this guy here gluten-free all-purpose flour, because I want to make sure I can eat this. Yeah. That's 
flower shadow. I don't think you would like it. So Shadow's feeling much better, which is good. Um, I told you guys last week how he had a bit of an upset stomach, which was causing problems. Um, but I think as of yesterday, he's like good to go now, which is awesome because uh, this morning we did bo pretty much both of our favorite thing, which was go to into the forest. Yeah, thank you. I know, me too. It was very weird. He wasn't being himself. Um, but yeah, I think he's back to normal now. And so, um, yeah, we went to the forest and I think it was actually like the first time in over a week since he's had like a big proper run around. And so he had super big zoomies, um, but then also keeping in mind that he's not done that in a while. I think he's quite tired from it. Just making sure that this is like 100% level. I think it is. I don't want it to... So baking is a science. I'm sure that's fine. It's like unevenly three quarter cup. Now it definitely, especially because there's chunks in it. Okay. So, flour, check. One and a half teaspoons of granulated sugar. Teaspoons? Okay, yeah, teaspoon. So apparently this is gonna make about 10 tarts, allegedly. I get to try out my new muffin tin that I bought. Um, we do have another muffin tin, but I bought a new one because I wasn't really a fan of the silicone one and I forgot that, well, I don't know what, I think I might've read a few different recipes because I was reading a recipe, like I was convinced I needed the candy thermometer for today. Um, went through the recipe, turns out I don't. I don't know where I read that I needed a candy thermometer at some point to stick it in my brain. Okay, one and a half teaspoons, so that means three of these. So there's half, there's one, there's one and a half. Okay. But yeah, so I have no idea why I thought that. <laughs> Same thing with needing another pie tin because I think I'm so used to making muffins and cupcakes that requires like by the time you make everything you like the size of our muffin tins we usually end up getting more than the standard 12 so I was like I don't want to use that silicone one for butter tarts I don't think it's going to cook evenly it's going to be a mess um but no apparently it's not going to be a problem all right so I also need to add a quarter teaspoon of salt we're gonna whisk that with a fork and then we got to do the cold butter slash ice cold water stuff and white vinegar apparently and again i don't know if this is standard if this is just a gluten-free you know thing or if this is normal to put vinegar in your pie crust we don't know because i've never done this before so we're learning new things together Okay, let's break this up with a fork. So quickly, whisk it all together. But yeah, so, so far it's been a very nice day. I got to have a bit of a lay-in. Shadow actually came and snuggled on my side of the bed today. I think I've told you guys before how he like will ask to come into bed on my side, but then I don't know if the conditions are not correct or something. So then he always goes over and snuggles with Liam um, in the morning. And so I don't know what it was. I guess the conditions were correct. Maybe he knew it was my birthday and was like, I need to be on my best behavior. You know, I'm gonna be really nice to her. Vinegar helps tenderize the crust and inhibits gluten development. Oh, there we go, perfect. So yeah, I, I assumed it must must have been a thing. Okay. So do that. So we need to pour in the vinegar and add the cubes of cold butter. So how much vinegar? A teaspoon. Actually, I might as well use the whole teaspoon just to be safe. Though it's a big bottle, I really hope I don't pour too much in because I could see that happening. Okay, half a teaspoon. 
I'm very concerned. No, okay. Teaspoon, teaspoon, vinegar, vinegar, okay. go. Teaspoon. And now cold butter. It was only half a cup, which I weighed out. Apparently that means it's about 57 grams. Um, oh, that smells. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's meant to be put in cubes, but like it's not a lot of butter, so I hope that this is the right amount of cubes. You know what I mean? I don't know. So, and then we need to use a pastry cutter or your fingers to have small chunks of butter throughout. I was talking to Liam about this earlier, and he said possibly if I just like, <laughs> you know, like cut the butter through, kind of, then that might help. I might, I, I'm probably gonna need to get my fingers dirty, but I know the goal is that we want like chunks of butter, right? The fork does this as well. That's what I was thinking. Why am I not using the fork for this? Okay. And then we're supposed to add the ice water a tablespoon at a time. Yeah, we want small chunks of butter throughout. See, this is why you guys are here, to help walk me through this. And it's like, obviously, if the butter is a bit cold, it's not gonna, the problem is, it's like, there's a fine line, right? As we work this in, I assume it'll get a bit warmer so that it can be broken apart with, um, but then you want it to stay cold enough that it doesn't just melt. Right? That's what it needs to do. I think. Okay. So, small chunks of butter throughout the flour and for the flour itself to be slightly sticky. It's kind of meant to have like a sandy appearance, isn't it? That, that's my estimation of the situation. Oh, that might be inaccurate. Some of these butter chunks seem a bit big. So I should, should I just get my hands in there? Hi, Dash! Good afternoon, how are you today? I just realized that the, okay, the lights are on for some reason. I think it's because the sun went behind the clouds. I was like, why is it so dark in here? It's actually fine. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are making butter tarts today, hopefully. That is the goal, that is the goal, that is the plan. So right now we're making pie crust. Okay, so is this incorporated enough, we think? I truly don't know. Okay, I think we're getting there. I think we're getting there. It's just, you know, I think this is the safe bet because I definitely feel like my hands are not cold enough for this. There must be, I'm sure there are people who constantly, because I feel like I am, I do have a really hard time regulating my body temperature but it doesn't usually extend to my hands. My hands are not usually the problem. Unless I'm like sitting on the computer for too long, I find. Yeah, they're a Canadian classic. I'm trying to think of like the best, like what the UK equivalent would be. And I would say it's probably like a caramel tart, I guess. Like a toffee sort of thing. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see at the end when we finish them and then you guys can tell me what the potential UK equivalent is. <laughs> my hands and toes are always cold, yeah. For me, it's really dumb, it's my knees. My knees are always cold and it's very strange. 
I guess because it's like your kneecap doesn't really have any like blood vessels over it or something dumb like that. Um, okay, this does feel a little wet. Is it becoming sticky? I don't know if I would say sticky. Let's just, you know, crumple this up a bit. Okay, now, yes, I'm understanding the stickiness thing. Okay. I was thinking it's the base for most. Yes, exactly, exactly. And that is one of the things that um, you can put in a butter tart is pecans, pecans. Um, I have some raisins that I'm gonna stick in, which actually apparently I need to rehydrate those for like 10 minutes. So I will do that. Um, okay. I think this is still ice cold. So now we need to create Shaggy Joe. You hate pecans, yes, you'd probably prefer this. Possibly, yeah, definitely. And to be fair, a lot of times they, like sometimes they won't have anything in them. I just happen to have raisins in the house and I need to figure out a way to get rid of them. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, so we need to add ice water a tablespoon at a time until the mixture forms a ball and doesn't crumble. Okay. And once it forms a ball, we need to then stick, create like a, a disc, a flattened disc in some saran wrap and then stick her in the fridge or in the freezer specifically, apparently. Again, we are doing this for the first time. I do know. <laughs> okay, two. But yes, the, the Nanaimo bars are gone now, guys. So last week we made Nanaimo bars. Those went down a treat. It worked out that the very last one um, we had one more and then last Sunday was UK Mother's Day. So North America celebrates Mother's Day in May, um, but the UK celebrates their Mother's Day in March. And I know that my mother-in-law really likes coconut. So luckily there was one left so I could give it to her and she could, she could uh, express an interest. I think she did like it. I asked her to report back and she never did, but I assume she inhaled it so fast she didn't have a chance. So that was two, right? That was two things of ice water. This is our third. It says it'll typically take four tablespoons, but it could take more, so we'll see. Want it until it forms a ball and won't crumble. I don't think we're there yet. I think we're almost there. I just, not quite. Yeah, not quite. Almost. It was really nice um, when Shadow and I went to the forest, there's like, I think I've explained before how there's kind of like two sections. There's like a meadowy section and then there's like a bit of a field section. And so it was one of the field section first because I find when we're walking in the forest, if Shadow's not had like super zoomies and we come across dogs, um, the like forest paths are a bit narrow. And so he like, I don't know. It just feels like it's a bit of a struggle for him. So I like when he's a bit calmer in the forest because then he's like less prone to running off into all of the like brambles and stuff and hurting himself unnecessarily. I do think that that was enough. Let's, I think we gotta, we gotta get our hand dirty. Get our hands dirty. Um, but anyway, so we're in the field section and this dog comes running over. It's sort of like a, a like a like a medium size, like a smaller side of medium, coming over. This like fluffy kind of golden dog. I'm sure it was some sort of like a doodly thing or whatever. Um, and ran around with Shadow. And it turns out that the dog's name was Scamp. And Scamp is actually the name of my dad's childhood dog. That in turn, when my aunt got um, a couple dogs. Uh, she named one of them Scamp. So that really made me happy that we got to play with a Scamp. I think this might need another thing of ice water, just like a little bit. I think we just need a little bit more because it's not coming together 100% yet. Because it's meant to come together but not be crumbly. And 
shit's still crumbling. So that's okay. Now, if that's not enough to bring this together, then I don't know what is. <laughs> and then it was also really sweet this morning because I got up and then, because uh, Liam's working from home today, which is awesome. Uh, and then, so he came downstairs and he gave me two cards and I was like, oh, like as a joke, I was like, oh, is one from you and one from Shadow. And he was like, yeah, actually, I'll go grab her. Just give me one second, because it just made me laugh so much. Because he found two like dog related cards and he didn't know which one to get. So he got both of them and had one be from Shadow. So look at this one, it's like a Whippet card. So it says, whip it, whip it real good. But then the inside <laughs> made me laugh so much. It says, woof, 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 wine, wine, heart paw print. And I was like, yeah, 100%, that's incredible. And so that made me really happy. That was really exciting for me. <laughs> Especially because Shadow does wine a lot. So I like how it was woof, woof, wine, wine. I was like, yep, yeah, mm -hmm, 100%, that is my dog. <laughs> That is my fur baby. That is exactly how he would talk. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hopefully we didn't make this too moist. I think because it was not moist enough originally. So. Oh well. If it's too wet, then I don't know what we're going to do. But. Okay. Once it forms a ball, flatten it into a disc and wrap it in plastic. So I'm gonna grab the plastic wrap preemptively. I'm gonna put this ooh, here. Grab the cling film. And then we need to put it down, make it into a thick disc. A thick disc. Thick with three C's, hopefully. Okay, here's our dough ball. Flatten her down. Hopefully all the butter hasn't melted. I think I can still see butter pockets. So I think it, I don't know, hopefully it's fine. If not, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Here we go. I'm a bit concerned that this is meant to make 10 pie crusts, but I guess they're meant to be thin, so it should be fine. All right, let's stick it in the freezer. Okay, step one, done that. Ooh. And actually we can use this ice water because um, I need to rehydrate some of these, um, oh, what are they called? Raisins, apparently. So I'm meant to use like a third of a cup. And this was from another recipe that I read that was like, well, if you're gonna use raisins, you should rehydrate them. This one doesn't call for that because they're using pecans. And like, if you don't use pecans, just like substitute them for something else. So that's what we're gonna do with this, but. I guess because if they're not kind of rehydrated, they'll probably absorb all of the liquid on the inside of the like part and then that would be a problem, I'm assuming. That's what I'm assuming, I don't actually know. So we're just gonna pop these in here for a little bit. And then we need to what? Set a half hour timer, I think? Yeah, about a half hour. Okay, and then while that's happening, we're gonna go over here to the hub, hob, hub, hob. Where am I, where did I put my thing? There we go. Oh right, I was making a timer. I was like, what was I doing? Setting a timer, you silly goose. Okay, half hour timer on. Now we need to make the butter tart filling. So we need to combine 
brown sugar, butter, maple syrup. Into a cold small saucepan, place on the stove and turn the heat up to medium. Okay, let's get some of these out of the way. So what do we need? We need brown sugar, maple syrup, vanilla, salt. So I'm gonna move, I don't know if we need this. We need those. I'm gonna put these back over here just so they're out of the way. And then we can, because we're not putting it, we're supposed to put it all in here before we stick it in the hub. So we might as well. This pot has seen better days. Just, you know, disregard it. <laughs> disregard the pot. Okay, these are clean. No, you are not clean. You are not clean. You guys are clean. Pot goes here. Brown sugar, butter, and maple syrup. Okay. How much do we need of each? Butter, maple syrup. Right? Brown sugar, butter, maple syrup. Okay. A third a cup and two teaspoons of packed brown sugar. Okay. Oh yeah, the butter can just go straight in, right? Butter, okay. Butter can go in here. I weighed out the two tablespoons earlier. It was roughly like a certain amount. So I was like, sure, whatever, that can go. In here. What is going on with this? There we go. Okay. Butter. Check. We need a third of a cup of packed brown sugar. Packed. Okay, one third and two teaspoons. So I think this is why people in the UK are like, why don't you just like weigh shit? Because like to weigh this with like a couple teaspoons just kind of seems like really random. It's like, why can't you come up with a unit of measurement that encompasses the whole thing? Okay, packed. One teaspoon. two teaspoons and a quarter cup of maple syrup. See, and I made sure I got the one that has the little maple, the little Canadian flag on it, made specifically in Ontario, which is where I'm from. So I wanted, I wanted that good good. Cause there was a few different maple syrup options and I ended up getting this one, which I think was slightly more expensive. Cause I was like, there's a flag on it. I want that one. Oh, just got brown sugar on my phone. Okay. Syrup. teaspoons of milk of choice, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So I think we're gonna be using this guy again. And then half an egg. Guys, this one was so dumb. It was half an egg I needed. So I needed to do an egg and then I needed to weigh out the egg. So your head is spinning. Oh no! Is it from doing, doing all the maths? Is it from the maths or do you have like a headache? Either way, I'm really sorry that's happening. That's gotta not be a fun time. Pop this out. Okay. 
300 entries. Yeah, no, I don't blame you. I don't blame you for having a spinny head in that instance. Okay, so now we need to bring our mixture over to the hub. I'm gonna use this one, because the one in the center is like a double hub, and I'm concerned about it getting too hot. So it's very much like, make sure it doesn't get too hot, make sure it doesn't do this, make sure it doesn't do that. I'm like, shit, I gotta make sure it doesn't do any of those things. So, place on the stove and turn up to medium high heat. Is it this one? I always get the hub wrong. Oh, perfect, I did, okay. Medium heat and allow the ingredients to melt together about three to five minutes. Gently stir with a rubber spatula, not a whisk, because we do not want to introduce too much air into the filling. Okay, so three to five minutes for dissolving. So we'll get our spatula. And then once this is done, apparently we're going to take it off the heat and then add milk, vanilla extract, and salt. Okay. Which, how much do we need of that? Apparently too, so I'm a bit paranoid about this because it's like, oh, make sure that you constantly like check in on it because you don't want it to solidify because we're kind of like making a runny caramel situation. Um, so I want to make sure that we don't have any problems. I think it should be fine though. Does that look fully melted? I think so. Okay, off the heat. Oh, it smells really good. Okay. Um, an eighth of salt. Jesus. Okay. I don't even have, I think we actually have an eighth here. Where are you? No, you're still a quarter. I thought we did have one. It's fine. We'll do an eighth of salt. I'm not stressing, it's fine, it's fine. Okay. An eighth of salt, so half of this. Sure. Salt. Half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. This guy and this guy. teaspoon vanilla extract. Oh, oh, it's fine, it's fine. I just dropped the spatula on the ground. I should have known better. We have another spatula though, so it's also fine. <laughs> Hi Aurora, hello, hello. Thank you so much. How are you, how are you? I am not panicking, but you know. <laughs> Okay, and then we need, what was it? One and a half milk. One and a half teaspoons of our milk of choice. Okay. <laughs> this is half. This is one. This is one and a half. Okay. And then apparently, yeah, definitely not panicking. Hanging in there. Oh no, is little guy poorly again? Okay, and then wait until this cools down a bit and then we need to stir in half an egg. It smells amazing. So I don't know if you can even see what this is, but see this is, we're kind of making like a caramel syrupy situation here. Oh, he's, oh no. That's unfortunate. That's frustrating. But yes, yeah, so we've made um, a pie crust, a dough, which is currently in the freezer. 
for a half hour and we're currently doing something with this. So we need this to cool down a little bit more and then apparently we dump half an egg in. So, and then we have to make sure we stir it every 10 minutes so it doesn't crystallize apparently. But it's fine guys, don't worry about it. We're, it's fine, <laughs> we're not panicking, everything is good. Let me put some stuff away. Oh, so the other thing too, I don't know if I told you guys, so um, uh, so you know how last week I was talking about Funfetti cake and how I've not had a, um, a Funfetti cake in a long time and I've tried to make Funfetti and it didn't work. I'm making you a bunch of mini pies entrails. I hope that is an acceptable alternative. I hope that is an alternative. Um, yeah, so Liam said, oh, I'm gonna make you a cake. I'm gonna try to make you a Funfetti cake. So he tried to make, well, I say try. He made a Funfetti cake, but I think we had the same problem that I did when I made them, that the sprinkles all melted. So the cake itself looks amazing. Let me show you guys. Let me show you this cake. Oh, it's a hefty cake. See, it's a big old, it's a big old hefty boy. Um, but yeah, so I think it's, an, it's going to be an amazing vanilla sponge. It just won't have rainbows in it, but you know what? I think that's okay. Do we think this is cool enough to stick the egg in? Has it been three to five minutes? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to you too. And trails, how are you doing? How are things? How's life? How was your weekend? Okay, I think, I don't know. I make gluten, did you really? Oh my God, that's amazing. You make gluten-free ones too? Aw, that's amazing. That means we could share them. Okay, wait three to five minutes until the filling is cool and then stir in half an egg. Where's my half an egg? I definitely did put it somewhere earlier. Oh, there it is. There it is. I found it. I found it. I found it. <laughs> That's so awesome though. I love that. Okay, here's my half an egg. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yes. Oh, I appreciate the thought. I appreciate that. Okay, we're mixing in half the egg. I hope it's cool enough and we don't make <coughs> saucy scrambled eggs. It's fine. It smells amazing, you guys. One day they will create smell a vision and you will get to partake. I think that will just be the next level of baking stream is when smell a vision can occur and you can smell the maple syrupy sugar buttery goodness that's happening right now. Okay, so this is our sauce. These, these raisins are looking a little sad. Maybe I shouldn't even put them in. I don't know. Cause apparently, so this recipe calls for pecans, um, but we're not doing pecans. And you, cause butter tarts traditionally will either be plain, they'll have pecans, sometimes they'll have coconut in them or they'll have raisins. And I just happen to have these raisins and I've had them for a while and I'm looking for a reason to use them. Um, so I thought I'll put raisins in them uh, but I don't know. They're looking, they kind of look, they're a little zombified. Apparently we need to rehydrate them, but they're looking a little sus, but maybe it's fine. I don't know. I don't know what rehydrated thing or, um, my raisins. I'm going to call them the mushrooms. What the hell? That I know it's supposed to be like, I want that microwave in the fist element so I can, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. We have gluten-free pie called Pie Spot. Oh my goodness, maple, ooh. That sounds amazing. I feel like that, this is probably the closest equivalent to that. The like Canadian butter tart is definitely like the combination of all of those things. So happy Tuesday. Will they be grapes? Honestly, probably, I don't know. Just like a, like a weirder version. Yeah. Thank you, hi Jess, good morning, good morning. 
How are you doing? Okay, let me see what's left on my timer. We've got about 14 minutes left for the dough. It is currently chilling. It is currently chilling like a villain. Um, but yeah, thank you, thank you. And guys, if you don't know, Saul had a job interview today and apparently it went really well. So all the fingers and toes crossed for him that he hears something good, that he hears good things. I'm really excited and happy. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, so we need to just keep stirring this apparently um, every 10 minutes so it doesn't crystallize. That's fine. I feel like these have been rehydrating for a while now. So let's take them out of their water bath. Maybe they'll look less gross afterwards. Your toes cramp if you cross them. Okay, don't cross your toes then. <laughs> Only cross the things that don't acquire, we don't want you to be in pain. No pain. No pain, no gain, but no pain, please. If they don't hire someone to drink gasoline and protest. Yes. You'll let, you know, the British government know all the way in Portland that there is a protest that's currently occurring. Yeah, I just might lose on paper. Yeah, that's okay, yeah. That's amazing, as long as you feel like you've done the best you can, then that's really all that you can ask of yourself. You know what I mean? That's amazing. Okay, here's our, here's our, our rehydrated. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's all good. Okay, what's next after we do this? So the oven is preheating to 400. We have a muffin tin. We have to pull the dough out of the freezer, place it between parchment paper plastic wrap. So what we should probably do is clean up this area a smidge. <laughs> I'll allow it. I'll allow it. <laughs> to some that might not be a punishment entrails, just saying. Just saying, some might not find that a punishable sentence. Okay, so let's pop some of these away. Cause we wanna make sure this is clear cause we're gonna have to roll out some parchment paper. Um, and apparently we're gonna roll out the pie crust in between two parchment paper layers, which I've never heard of doing before, but that seems like a good idea to me because it seems like it could be quite messy otherwise. I'm passionate about my friends. <laughs> yes, no, I I know you, you're you a passionate guy. We love you for it. Good to have passion, you know? Good to be passionate about stuff. Okay. Oh, we can put this away too. We no longer need the ingredients, so we can pop these away while everything is stirring. We make sure no crystally bits. I don't know how this is gonna make 10 butter tarts. This seems like a very small amounts of stuff, but who knows? I might be pleasantly surprised. I may be pleasantly surprised. These are clean. Okay, so we'll wipe down our surface. So the one thing that I am a bit, not concerned about, but I'm not sure, and I will get your guys' opinion on, is one of the things that we need to do is obviously we have to cut out the dough into little circles. And so the recipe recommends a three and a half inch diameter cookie cutter. So I have these cookie cutters. One is three, six, three and sixteenth of an inch. So just see here, look at this, look at the bullshit. Okay, so this is three sixteenths of an inch, three and one sixteenth, and this is three and seven sixteenths. So we either have like just shy, just over three inches, or basically four. So neither of those is three and a half. But the way I'm thinking is obviously we have to cut them out and then they're going to go into the pan. So they're gonna shrink down a little bit, right? And so we wanna make sure that there's enough dough that when it goes into the pan, it doesn't like 
there's still like a perimeter all the way to the top of the pie tin. You know what I mean? So I'm not sure if we should go bigger or if we should go smaller. That's what I'm not sure about. We can obviously test both, but this is the current conundrum that we need to sort out at some point. But in the meantime, I guess we can prep, we can prep the surface. So we need parchment paper that we need to sprinkle with some <laughs> Yeah, to, yeah, it's true. Go big and then use a small one to come. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think the bigger one probably is the safest bet for now. But yeah, we'll definitely test both. I don't know if this is too big of a parchment paper situation, but this is what we are doing. It'll be fine. It'll be good. It'll be all good. Okay, we don't need this anymore. We need this. We do need some extra. Yes, we are all fibered up now. We are coming to you live with fiber optic internet. Yeah, I was telling Saul about this yesterday. So basically, I think I mentioned to you guys before how, yeah, we the plan for the install of the fiber was yesterday, which is fine. And then there was that person who came to the door and I didn't know who they were. And then it turns out luckily they were from the internet company. So that was okay, but it could have gotten weird. Um, and so yesterday, apparently, so the, we got, Liam got a message saying at any point between 1 p.m. and 6 p.m., the people will come to install the fiber. So I was like, okay. Yeah, it is. <laughs> tis, it is my birthday. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, from the internet. Yeah. Is that, is that not the correct term? Is that not the correct term? from the internet. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, and then, so basically from one on, I think it was like three and I was planning, cause my parents um, were busy today. And so I was like, okay, we, so we were planning to video chat yesterday. And so it was like, okay, cool. We're gonna video chat. And of course the time change has happened. <laughs> Thank you so much. You guys, you guys, guys, I'm, uh, yeah. <laughs> So I'll add 10, add 10 more to that. I do appreciate you all telling me that I look like I'm still in my 20s, but I know mentally, I hope to God I'm not in my 20s anymore. <laughs> no, we, we good old 31 over here. Oh yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. I'm also okay with that. I'm okay with being 210. <laughs> okay, this seems like a lot, but it's fine. Okay. But yeah, so the plan was to video chat with my parents. Does this look like, oh, does this look like too much flour? I'm not sure. I don't know, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, so I was video chatting with my parents at four because also the time change happened in North America, but we don't have the time change happening until this weekend here in the UK. So for about a week, two weeks, instead of being seven hours ahead, I'm six hours ahead of my parents. So that means we were chatting at four when we normally chat at five. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's true, it's true. You don't look like a tortoise. You do not, I saw that picture of you snuggling up to, to two fluffy kitties um, the other day. And I also noticed that you shaved your beard because you had a proper like Viking caveman beard situation. And I do notice that since you have shaved that, you do look a lot younger. Not saying you look like an old man before, but that is a thing. Beards seem to make men seem a lot, you know, older than they are. But yes, I'm like, don't you dare. Cause I'm like, I know you not be looking like an eight. You might feel like a 98 year old sometimes, but I know you don't look that way. I know you don't look that way. <laughs> okay, what are we, okay, five minutes. Let me just check on the dough. Pretty cold, but obviously I want to make sure it's like 
cold, cold. You know what I mean? Um, what was I saying? Yes. And so I was like, oh, I wonder if the guy's even going to come. It's getting dark out. Like the sun goes down. I know he's installing things in the house, but I know he has to go outside. So I'm like, maybe dude's not going to turn up. Um, literally like not even a minute into my video call with my parents, Liam calls me up being like, oh, the internet guy's outside to set up the fiber. And I was like, of course he is. Of course he is. So in the end, I ended up chatting with my parents at five anyway, even though normally that's what we normally do. So on the 30th or 30th of December at 333, 333, age 333. Ah, that'll be amazing. That'll be your magic number. Three is a magic number. <laughs> a cerebral assassin. <laughs> I'm like, aren't you both in the comedy space? <laughs> I think you guys are probably both funny. Well, I can attest to the fact that you're both funny. Okay, the goop is still gooping. Let me figure out what I'm supposed to do with these raisin pecan things. So once we're done, okay. So pull it out of the freezer, allow it to sit. Once you're able to slightly poke the dough, remove the plastic wrap, time to work. Place the disc between two pieces of paper. Sprinkle both pieces with some gluten-free flour, plastic parchment, blah, blah, blah. Use the rolling pin on top of covered dough to roll a thickness of approximately an eighth of an inch. Use the cookie cutter, do the thing. Push the rounds into the greased muffin tins. Use a fork to prick the bottom for the air release. Repeat, you might need to re-roll the dough. If it begins to melt and become sticky, wrap it in the plastic wrap again and place in the freezer again to re-solidify. Hopefully we don't have to do that, but yes. <laughs> yes, the goop do be gooping. Yeah, exactly, it is. Cause we don't want it crystallizing. That's the whole thing. We're supposed to stir it every 10 minutes so it doesn't crystallize and solidify. So it'd still be gooping. That's the goal. The goal is for the goop to be gooping. As a funny person, I'm always checking my DMs for anger responses to my jokes. Yeah, probably, probably. <laughs> it's true, it's true. There are different, different like mediums. Like comedy has different mediums within it. There's your stand up, there's your improv, there's your, absolutely, there's your scripted. You know what I mean? There's different things. Okay. While we do the thing, all the dough is cut, place in the muffin tin, bake for eight to nine minutes. Remove it, drop it down, place about three sliced pecans or a handful of whatever filling. Okay, so after we bake the pie crust, then we stick the raisins in and then we put the goop on top. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. We have like less than a minute left. I'm gonna take it out now and if it's too soft, it's all good. <laughs> yes, yes I did hear, I did, I did see you say, I saw you announce your return after being in Twitch jail. Okay. So I feel like we can, we can poke it. It is pokeable. Yeah, I think there's, you know, the, the problem when you're on a platform that is trying to be advertiser friendly, if, if your sense of comedy is not advertiser friendly, I could see that being problematic for you. <laughs> okay. So now, whew, we roll out the dough. And then apparently, Put it in between the layers of parchment. And then we roll it out. It is still quite cold, but that's probably what we want, right? Oh, she crumbling though. Maybe, maybe we don't want it. Maybe it's too, that's not good. I wasn't expecting it. Why was I not expecting it to crumble apart? Obviously it was gonna do that. I don't know if you can see, there's like a massive like fissure. <laughs> Okay. We're assuming it will come together and it'll be fine. It's just a bit, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm sure that's like with any creative space um, where you have people not getting it or being offended by it and then you don't know if you're or if you're not getting the reaction that you want for your craft I could see it being difficult yeah this is definitely very cold but we're getting it somewhere yeah look she crumbly But it's fine. We'll just keep doing what we're doing. Now I'm wondering, now I'm thinking that maybe the double parchment isn't the best idea. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about the double parchment. I feel like it is not serving us. I think it's help. I think the first parchment is probably good but the double parchment doesn't seem helpful. So that means we should probably... Yeah, to be fair, I usually am. I am a big uh, cut corners when it comes to baking usually. I'm a big fan of a box mix, to be completely honest. It's only really since we've forayed into doing this for content that I have undertaken, you know, attempting to do these sorts of things for myself. But yes, it's not something that I, <laughs> I do all the time. Oh, this is, this is, okay. This is a crumbly mess. We are gonna put it back together for a second and like re-roll it out. Cause I am not yippy. Cause parts of it are crumbly as shit and other parts are not. So let's just put it all back together and try again. In the, in the immortal words of Elia, first you don't succeed, dust yourself off and try again. Okay, we probably need to put more flour down as well. Just flour everywhere. <laughs> yeah, oh, excellent, I'm glad. I'm glad I could be of service, right? Yeah, you're like, not for me, but I will, I will watch. <laughs> and I, I feel like that's good. I feel like that's helpful. Okay, let's put more powder down. Well, that was a lot. That was a lot, but it's fine. We probably need it. Maybe, I don't know. We should also probably give the other thing a stir. Oh damn, the first hour's already gone. I, you couldn't have told me. You couldn't have told me. Oh no, oh, the goop is solidifying. Okay, we need to stir the goop. Okay. Okay. It's meant to not get sticky. Is it gonna be sticky? I don't know. We might have to stick it back in the fridge in the freezer. It's getting sticky. <sighs> okay. Well, I don't know what they want me to do because <laughs> they're like, you need to be able to roll it out, but it can't be too cold or else then you can't roll it out. So I don't really know what this dough wants from me to be completely honest. <laughs> I love how this folk music has got a very, like, Asian twist. Okay. Okay, I think, I think it'll be okay. Maybe, again, more flour on everything. Wow. 
when in doubt, add flour. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling. I'm like, why, why is this a folk song? I guess to be fair, it's probably Chinese folk, which is, that's nice. I appreciate the multicultural approach to folk music. It just was unexpected. Okay. Do we think this is an eighth of an inch? I don't know. That's the thing that I never understand. Eighth of an inch is apparently like three millimeters. Yeah, I'm like, I don't ah! Again, not enough flour. Okay, we need to just not <laughs> roll it. I feel like I should just use my hands. Like it literally just absorbed all of the flour I just put on it. Like, listen. Okay. There we go. Sort of, kind of, maybe. There. I'm going to assume that this is correct. <laughs> to be fair, not being funny entrails, but that's a concern, like, <laughs> that I have a little, not really, but kind of, in the terms of, uh, baking too much and needing to consume all the baking. That's why it's good when people come over so that I can give them some of the baking. Okay, so apparently we gotta work fast. Let's give this, give the goop a stir. So I've oiled these, hopefully they stay oiled. I don't know if they can unoil themselves. Um, okay. So we need to roll it, cut them out, and then push the rounds into the grease muffin tin. Okay. I don't know where this needs to live. Maybe here? Maybe here for now. That doesn't seem like the best place for it, but that's where it's gonna live. Okay. We'll see. It's all my neighbors, yeah. <laughs> that's nice, I really like that. Okay. So this is the largest one. Cause remember how we weren't sure if we were gonna use the large one or the not large one? Yeah, no, I definitely think the large one is the way to go. Cause these just, look at that! It just like pops itself right in there. Okay. Cool. I'm okay with that. Excellent. Okay. That's that, yes. <laughs> Go team! Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> yeah, okay. We made crust. Is it maybe getting a bit too warm right now? Maybe, I don't know. Let me just be gentle and just kind of smush it into the little, little container. <laughs> They're gonna look cute now. If only, hopefully they bake. Hopefully they bake, cause I'm feeling, I'm feeling good now. I'm feeling good, cause it, they, they kind of look cute. <laughs> so hopefully, we will though need to take this and roll it all out again, and it's probably gonna be a bit of a pain in the ass, but it's okay. It'll be worth it. Hopefully, maybe. Cause I guess, oh, it broke. But I think we can fix it. I think we can save it. I think it's salvageable. There we go. Okay. I do think maybe, is this getting a bit warm? We'll try one more and then if that one breaks, 
Actually, you know what it is? It's probably again, because there's not enough. It just absorbs all of the flour that I stuck on here earlier. And there's really nothing I can do about that. So unfortunately, I do think it is back in the fridge. Just to be safe, just because we really want to make sure that this works. I'm also tempted to say fuck it about this parchment paper situation, because I don't think that's really serving us right now. I guess we can use the top one, because the bottom one is all goopy right now. It also said too, while we stick this dough in the fridge, that we should probably stick the ones we put in the pan in the fridge. I don't know if there's enough room in the fridge, but that's fine. Okay, you need to get out of here. You need to be re-saranned. Re we must re saran you and pop you back in the freezer for a minute because you are getting sticky and apparently that's bad. So let's smack it, wrap it, stick it in the freezer. For another 10 minutes. And then we need to find room in the fridge for these, but they look cute. So far, so good. Oh, amazing. You're like, I was ready to pull my hair out, but I made it happen. Okay, they can fit up on the top rack, kind of. <laughs> Okay. So that needs to do its thing. This we can throw out because it's being a pain in the ass. This we don't need because we determined that we're using the bigger one. This guy. Now let's throw this out because that was being a pain in the butt. And I do think we need to use an F ton more flour if we're gonna make this work. So let's do that. <laughs> let's stir the goop. She's still gooping. And then again, a bunch. Let's see, where's our timer at in terms of? Okay, that does seem like too much. But then again, no, it does seem like too much. I don't know. It's like trying to, how do you spread? Um. Oh my God, my brain just short circuited. How do you spread flour evenly on a work surface? Because I always find I get like sticky sections. And it just never seems like enough in the right places. Like all these gaps are then going to get dough stuck to them. I truly don't know. That's the, thank you for that. Thank you for that, Aurora. I'm like, my brain literally was not computing. Guys, like, okay. The hand sifty method. There's a sifty method? I can't sifty for shit, apparently. You gotta, it's like a this, isn't it? I don't know, I just like smack it around and hope for the best. Yeah. I don't know. Good enough. It involves coffee. Yeah, it's true. I do think it's like, cause you do see it on cooking shows, eh? Where they'll do this. So I just flung water at you guys. Whoops. Whoops, let me get that, let me get that. It's fine, it's all good, it's all good. Yeah, it's like a, like a this. <laughs> cause yeah, cause I don't know, this seems, this seems like too much, but the way it's absorbing it all, maybe it's not. And also, I guess maybe as we spread it out. 
rude. Yeah, as we spread it out, maybe it'll be better. Or it'll, I don't know, do its thing. Okay. Let's put more stuff away since I don't really know. We can't do anything until the dough is, whatchamacallit, cold. Let's drink some tea. Let's drink some tea, guys. I'm drinking Glow by Twinings. Twinings? Twinings. Twinings? This guy. This one. Up here, I guess you can't you can't tell. It's off camera. But this is this is the tea stash. This is what I'm drinking. Whatever this guy is. This guy here. This is this is the tea of choice for the day. I'm like, for having fiber, my Twitch, like, manager thing, the video keeps freezing. by Len, Steal My Sunshine. And I've gone my entire life knowing that this, like there's a talking intro before the song starts all about them trying to cheer up their friend with butter tarts. And then when I was looking to find that, to clip that sound bite, apparently it's only in the album version of the song. So the single version and the music video version don't actually have that talking bit in it, which is a real shame because all of the versions that I grew up with have that commentary in it. But yeah, and if you didn't know, Len Steal My, of Steal My Sunshine fame, I think they also sang Kids in America on like the Digimon movie soundtrack. Canadian, <laughs> the more you know. Okay, let's see what this Because it is getting warm in here, which makes sense because the oven's on. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm taking this out too early. I don't want to in the morning. Oh, did it really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I always like providing you guys with CanCon moments. Just like Canadian broadcasting, I too must provide, I think it's 15% Canadian contact, Canadian con content every hour, legally. I was in Winnipeg last week. <laughs> yeah, did you? Yeah? I'm sure they did. <laughs> That's actually where my aunt uh, lived for the longest time. <laughs> I'm glad, I appreciate you using your uh, your Canadian city knowledge, Saul. You think you're dropping some obscure, some obscure city on me. I'm like, I know where that is. <laughs> okay, this is, this is proving to be much better. This is a much nicer experience. It does still smell quite vinegary though, which is interesting, but. Okay, three quarters of an inch, here we come. Okay. 
There we go. That should be, that seems three quarters of an inch S. You're so just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, three days a week, mandatory, mandatory tash time. <laughs> It's just, it's just the way it is. That's just, you know, okay. See, and then you have all this excess flour on, but I guess it all bakes off, right? Well, or not. If not, there's just a bunch of like raw flour at the bottom, which is fine, right? It's okay, no one will know, no one will know. Yeah, you can really, I can really smell the vinegar in the dough now. I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. The sun is going down and it is right in my face. It's okay. It's just ghost mode Tasha being activated. Okay. I guess if I had like a pastry brush, I could like maybe brush off this excess flour, but I don't. So I'm using my fingies and hoping for the best. How's our goo doing? We should probably give her a stir. I do really hope these turn out guys. I'm really excited. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Saskatchewan, yeah. Saskatchewan, you don't like Newfoundland? Or Nunavut? Nunavut's a fun word to say. Stir the goo! Yeah, the goo is still gooing. So we're good to go, good to continue the goo. Let's try to get, I don't know, it's not happening. It's just, there's gonna be flour everywhere. <laughs> good pun. <laughs> good to goo, good pun. I love that. I love that, you guys. See, that's my that's my sense of humor. I love a good pun. <laughs> love a good pun. Okay, we've got six, apparently. We should be able to get um 10 so we'll see ooh that sounds amazing yeah absolutely i feel like mozzarella sticks should be I had nachos. I had I had microwave nachos today for lunch. It's one of my faves. Doritos. And then I ripped up some like turkey, some sliced turkey and sliced ham with some cheese and some salsa. Cause I was like, listen, it's my birthday. I'm gonna have all I'm gonna I'm gonna eat and enjoy my favorite things. So it's, you know, taking Shadow into the forest, eating nachos for lunch, hanging out with you guys. Living my best life. And then Liam asked what I wanted for dinner tonight and I was like, sushi? Can I please have sushi? Sushi, wow, I sound like a baby. Sushi? Sushi. Cause you know, I feel like I would also like to have my favorite dinner option as well. Salmon avocado rolls, baby. Love a good sushi, yeah, exactly. My favorite ones are actually like Philadelphia ones where they do like a salmon avocado, but they also put a bit of Philadelphia cream cheese in it. I don't know what it is, man. It's just so decadent and lovely. Okay, let's move some of this flour back here. Again, Kat, we are the same person. Time and time again, the universe likes to remind us that we are the same. <laughs> Okay. Ooh, flash fried ones. Yeah, that sounds really nice. 
Yeah, that's the only thing that I it, that's annoying, obviously, having celiac is not being able to have any of the tempura tempurad sushi options. It's just uh oh we getting a bit crumbly. Everyone likes the Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, is that just as good, if not better? <laughs> It's true, it's true. Are there any, like, I'm trying to think, cause you know how there's things like called like Philly cheese steaks and there's like state specific foods, right? Like Chicago deep dish pizza, stuff like that. Are there foods in the UK that are named after UK things? Like I know there's like Lincolnshire sausages, but I don't think that that's the same or is it? You know what I mean? Like is there is there like a food that you specifically call like a British town or British state food? Do you know what I mean? Is that a thing or no? It's again like it was the same thing when we were talking about um pickup lines based on states and how I don't know if there's any other state specific pickup lines, if there's just a Tennessee one. I know Kat had like an American specific one, but in terms of like states, but yeah, I'm like, is there any like British? Oh yeah, yeah, Yorkshire pudding. That's true, that is true. Cause Yorkshire is a place, I would qualify that. I would qualify that. Tip tree jam, tip tree's a place. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I guess the Yorkshire pudding, that would be, that would be the one. Cause you wouldn't call it any other kind of pudding. Oh, that's true, the Cornish pasty. Yeah, okay, yeah, there are a few then. This is true, this is true. Sometimes we just need reminding. What do we got now? We got two, four, six, eight, nine. Two, four, six, eight, who do we appreciate? I think we could probably get a bit more. Maybe we can get 11. Says we can get 10. Really, were you? Find any nice ones. Cornwall's nice. Quite enjoy a seaside town every once in a while. Though Hearn Bay is also a really nice seaside town. Um, and they also have an Alice in Wonderland themed calf in uh, Hearn Bay. That does Alice in Wonderland themed afternoon tea. It's very nice. 10 out of 10, quite enjoy. Yeah, I think we could get, I think we can get two. Maybe we can get a full 12. That would be amazing. Our thing is fried green tomatoes. Ooh, yeah. Isn't that, that's the name of a movie, isn't it? Fried green tomatoes. Isn't Cher in that movie? Okay, home stretch, you guys. We're, we're oh, let's stir the goo. Let's stir the goo. Cool. It is. No share. Oh, what one am I thinking she's in then? It's not the mermaids one. Kathy Bates is in it though. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. That's cool though, I like that. Okay, the bits of the dough are crumbling apart. I think we can get 12. I'm confident we can get a full dozen shells. That's what I'm hoping for. Possibly, possibly. Is that the mermaid one though? I was trying to think not the mermaid one, but maybe it was. Is that the one with Christina Ricci as well? 
I've not seen these films, but. Okay. Boom. Oh, right. Yeah, duh. The doy doy. You're right. I think you're right, Saul. Yeah, the mermaids one is literally called mermaids. That is correct. You are right. <laughs> you're like, yep, abs absolutely. Right, let's try to get one more and then we're gonna have a full dozen. Hopefully, now there will be enough filling. I assume there will be. I believe in us. I believe in us, guys. I think we can make it happen. Okay. One more shell. Might be a bit of a thin guy, but I think. Oh, this one's actually a bit thick. Whoops. Okay. Oh, oh no. No, no. Ah, that didn't work. That didn't work. Let's just get this out of here. We can try again, though. We can try again. Okay. Yeah. You know what it is? I feel like there were so many movies and like, I've not seen them, but you know when they come out in the 90s, 2000s and they all have like the same movie poster? So in my brain, I'm trying to figure out which one I'm thinking about. Okay, if we can just, it's gonna be a tight one. Cause it's getting to the point where I think it's getting a bit too crumbly. I think we can do it. And then if it cracks, so be it. Come on, be nice, be nice. Get in the container. Okay, no, it definitely did crack, but. That's fine. I feel like it's fine if it's a bit cracked. So we can actually probably take a little bit of dough and like patch it out. Yeah. I'm just gonna put like a bit of dough over top of the crack. That, sh that should work, right? That should, that should sort it out. So here's our, here's our pie, little mini pies essentially. But yeah, I'm just taking a little bit of extra dough and just shoving it in there. Okay, so just making sure that these are all like firmly in the pans. Okay. Oh, we're back at, we're back at the opera guys. We're back at the opera. Oh, interesting. Was there, what, was there like a hit single for that one? Okay, and then now, I think we need to prick the bottom. Yeah, prick the bottom of the tart twice to release air during baking. Yeah, it's honestly, I feel like if I, if I could be reincarnated into somebody who already exists, like a time travel reincarnation, um, it would be to become 90s Winona Ryder. 90s, 80s, because like one of my favorite movies is uh, is Heather's, and I love her style in Heather's. I also love her in Beetlejuice. Yep, 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 absolutely, I concur. We are big Winona stands. Okay, we're letting the air escape. They have been, they've been pricked. Oh, the Shoop song. The Shoop Shoop, the salt and pepper Shoop Shoop. Or is that a different one? No, that is, that is the one, isn't it? Oh, here I go, here I go, here I go. That one? Okay, just making sure I got all the extra stuff off of it. 
Okay, done the thing. Okay, okay. Once the dough is cut and place them up to 400 degrees for eight to nine minutes. Okay. Eight to nine minutes. So we'll set an eight minute timer. Eight minutes. Oh. I don't know then. Let me check. Let me, let me, I need to Google that then. The Shoop Shoop song. The, whoop, 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 whoop. You'll know it. Yeah, 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 probably. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, the Aretha, yeah, because it's a cover. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in his kiss. That's what it is. Does he love me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now, while that's happening, do we need to be doing anything? No, but once the muffin tin comes out of the oven, we need to decrease the temperature of the oven to 375. And then we need to place, pour the filling in each jar just below the edge and bake again for 10 to 12. We also have like a little bit of excess dough, but I think we just need to chuck it. There's really nothing we can do with that. Okay, and then while that's doing its thing, make sure this doesn't check on check on the goop. Goop looks good. Guess we'll do some dishes, probably. Probably should do some dishes. Clean up around here. Clean up in aisle whatever. And then I'm also thinking too, to put the goo in, we probably should spoon it in. Because I think if we just try to pour it in via the pot, um, it's going to cause problems. As in, I'm not, my aim isn't that good. All right, let's do some dishes, shall we? Shall we? Oh, wow. It's like half, it's like, you know what it is? What, what's the name of that, what's the name of the villain? What's the name of Harvey Dent's alter ego where half his face is all messed up and the other half is fine? I'm doing that right now. The guy who flips the coins. My, my DC knowledge is substandard. Is it just called, he's called Two-Face, isn't he? Yeah, I was gonna say, it's that simple, it's Two-Face. This is my, this is, this is the Tasha Two-Face version. It's like half ghost, half not ghost. Yeah, it is that simple. You know, sometimes you're like, I think that this is a more complicated name, and it's not, it's just Two-Face. It could just be that simple, you know? Yeah. Was he Two-Face in one of the films? I assume if he was, he was probably in the Tim Burton one, right? Did anyone see Sh the second Shazam film? Yeah, the Jim Carrey one. Is that the same? I know it's the same universe as um, Schwarzenegger's Mr. Freeze, right? I don't know if that happens in the same movie, but I know that that is the same Batman, right? That's a good one. I don't even know if I've watched those all the way through, but those are definitely like the cult classic ones. And obviously I'm a Tim Burton stan as an extension Winona Ryder stan. So yeah, I'd probably enjoy them. Even just for like the campiness of them. That's the one thing that like Liam and I will, like I don't know a lot about the DC universe, um, but we will usually watch the DC cartoons. Like we'll watch the DC um, Batman cartoons and stuff. We enjoy those. Less so, like I don't care as much about the live action one. Yeah. 
Yeah, I definitely should look into watching that one. Oh, geez, sweet relief. The sun went down behind a cloud. Whew, give my eyeballs a break. Let me make sure. I did set that timer because we do not want these to burn. Let me just make sure I actually did set it. Okay, thank God. Because <laughs> I feel like every time we do a baking stream, I always forget to set the timer at least once. So I'm glad that I've not done that yet. Knock on wood, you know, the stream is still young. <laughs> Let's hope that that doesn't happen. Should probably clean our work surface as well because we need to put that down to then pour the stuff in. Ooh, I should probably use this quarter cup. I think that would be a good goop pourer. I think that's a good idea. That's what we'll do. Take a little break from the dishes. To clean this work surface. Because then we'll put the, um, the tray down here. Because then we need to actually assemble the butter tarts. We're doing the tart right now. So the tart is currently baking. And then we have operation add the goop to the butter tarts. Well, to the tart shells to then turn them into butter tarts. So we got to do the thing. Um, so we're pretty much like, I feel like this is this kind of schedule we had last time, like a couple weeks ago. So a similar schedule again this week. So today we're baking. Thursday we're gaming. We're strange horticulturing. We need to figure out who is causing all the motors, all the moitas, all the moitas that keep happening in the town and all the puzzles and such while we find new plants to identify. Um, and then Friday, we are back on cozy couch, cross-stitching duty, detail, stuff. Hanging out with me and the puppo. And yeah, which is what we did last time. So I think that's pretty good. All right, that is set and ready. Wow, would you look at that? Was it between eight and nine minutes? How am I supposed to know if they're done? Because I don't want them to be fully cooked. How do we know? How do we know? Um, it doesn't say how we know. I guess they're only meant to be like partially baked. You won't be, a, yes, yeah. You're gonna be on route to your long awaited trip. You're gonna be off doing adventures. So I'll be going on adventures the next weekend. Okay. So I stuck them in another pan just because I thought that that would help in case they like spill over. They look like they're doing well. Yeah, part baked. There we go. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. And I bet you, you will also have a lovely time. Okay, so here's our partial bake. They look, they've definitely shrunk. So that's okay, they're like mini tarts. All right, so apparently we gotta add, I don't wanna add like a bunch of raisins cause I know that raisins can be a bit, um, okay. Yeah. Yes, 
I'm gonna assume that yes, they do have they have some resistance. Okay. We're gonna just add a few. I think I probably like re thought re rehydrated too many raisins. Oh maybe not. I don't know. They're a bit, I don't know, they're a bit short, like they've shrunk. So I am a bit concerned of filling spillage, but we'll see. There we go. I don't wanna put too many raisins in because I know that raisins again are not the best. I don't know, people have, people are weird about raisins. Okay. So we now have the goo. We now have to pour in enough that, now what? Okay. Mm, yeah, just below the edge. So the edges of these are a bit inconsistent. So I think we start with this and just see how it goes. Because I also think, too, there will be, like, a bit... I don't know. I assume there will be a bit of, like, bubbling up action. So the pie crusts have shrunk. I don't want raisins in my food. Yeah. My husband would say you've ruined them. Yeah. Oh, well, more for me, then. I don't need to share. <laughs> yeah. I don't like raisins in salad. People will put them in, like, a salad and, like, with berries and junk. Not a fan. Yeah, I don't know. That's why I didn't put like tons of raisins. You can eat around the raisins. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I think I'll I'll go in with like an initial scoop and dump, and then that's what I do. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You go. Oh, you don't want them? Too bad. See, with Liam, if he doesn't want me eating any of his snacks, he just has to get them all full of gluten. They put them in their potato salad? Really? Interesting. I've never heard of that. That's an interesting one. I don't know, is there a faster way to be doing this? Maybe. <laughs> Doesn't help, I guess, cause it's like, oh, a small saucepan and this is more of like a medium to large saucepan, but I don't got a small one. So we just gonna have to deal with it. Oh my God, I think I learned that people, oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe we did talk about that before. I remember us talking about potato salad once. And yeah, so maybe the, the raisin thing may have come up. Yeah. That's funny. Oh yeah, I had to turn down the oven too. Okay, okay, let's, let's do this. We need to turn down the oven. Okay. Turn me down. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Yeah, I was quite impressed with the size. They're like a little short, but also I feel like, I don't know. I feel like from what I'm remembering of butter tarts, like the depth and like the size of the shell and casing and stuff like that, like they are, it does vary. So I'm not, I'm not mad about it. Cause you can get like mini butter tarts, you can get massive butter tarts. So I do think that we did not bad. Ooh. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad. Yeah, people seem to really be enjoying them. They find them quite cozy. I'm gonna have to start thinking of other things to bake next. But yeah, they really, they really seem to be, we seem to have found our niche with these, which is quite interesting. Cause I never would have thought, I never thought of myself as a baker. But maybe that's part of the appeal, because I'm just, you know, figuring it out as we go. We're doing it together. We're all in this together. Okay. Hmm. We need to do some, some scoopy scoops. Get all the goo. All the good, good goo. Okay, which ones look like they need a bit more? Maybe this guy. Yes, hopefully. Oh, I don't know, Saul, if, uh, if you were here, but I was talking about how Liam heard me talking about Funfetti. And uh, so he was like, oh, I'm gonna make you a Funfetti cake for your birthday. And I was like, oh, well, you know, one of the potential concerns is the sprinkles melting. And so he made a cake. I'll show you guys later the cake. Um, it looks really nice, but we do think that the sprinkles unfortunately melted. So we still have yet to have secure funfetti in terms of like the suspended sprinkles. But we have some theories because a lot of sprinkles have um, wheat starch as one of their ingredients. And so we're wondering if they're coated in that starch in order to like stop them from melting as quickly. Um, and obviously because I can't have wheat starch, then we're getting the starchless ones and how that's then maybe causing problems in terms of the melting components. Um, but my mother-in-law had a suggestion about maybe coating the sprinkles in um, corn flour before we stick them in. So that also might be an option. I'm just trying to get all of the goo out. But yeah, so so we still have yet to find the gluten-free funfetti um, situation. But we have some we have some troubleshooting ideas. So yes, one day. One day funfetti cake for Saul. And who knows, you know, it might just be that I have to make you a gluteny one and then I can't eat it and you'll just have to enjoy it for the both of us. <laughs> That's also an option. Okay, these are now as full up as we can get them. I think we've done as much goo as we can. Let's pop them in. Oh, oh. How much of a timer were we supposed to have? 10 minutes or until the crust is golden brown. Okay, so we'll start with 10. And we'll see, should I actually, here, let me eat some of these re, <laughs> rehydrated uh, whatevers. Did she? Mm-hmm. I'll have to double the cake. Yes, I know. What a shame. Saul might have to eat all the cake. I don't know what he's going to do in that instant. Yeah, that wasn't it that he posted on his true social that he was convinced he was going to be getting arrested today. So that would be nice. <laughs> they taste fine. I probably should have done a raisin check before I stuck them in the tarts. Because could you imagine if these tasted like ass and then I just ruined all my butter tarts with these raisins? But they don't taste bad. Obviously, if you don't like raisins, they're gonna taste like ass to you anyway. But for me, who doesn't have any, you know, ways about them. Mm -hmm. I saw that they've started, um, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> One person's punishment is another person's guilty pleasure. You know, it happens. Yeah, I saw that um, the cops in New York were preemptively sticking up like barriers and things like that, just in case like riots and stuff were gonna break out. 
Ugh. What do I need to do? Do I need to do anything else right now? I need to clean. I can put some stuff in the dishwasher. I could bypass the cleaning by just putting things straight in the dishwasher. Check me out. There's some things that can't be in the dishwasher, but the things that can go in the dishwasher, you best believe I am putting them in the dishwasher. Okay. Oh, let's have a bit of a tea break. Let's have a tea break. on stream guys that we'll actually get to see you guys will actually get to see the finished product in real time because wasn't it the first time we made the pokeball cake we went over time and so i had to finish it off stream and then when we made nanaimo bars we had to wait until the um whatchamacallit the custard set so i couldn't cut into them on stream i had to wait until afterwards and even too i think when we made our cupcakes for the one year anniversary celebration. We iced it, like we decorated some of them, but I then off stream had to finish decorating all the other ones. So I think this is actually the very first time, I think we finally found a recipe in which you guys get to be here from start to finish of the, of the situation. Cause they're gonna come out of the oven and then we're gonna have them cool. I'll actually grab the cooling rack out now preemptively. Um, so they get to come out of their their container and you know maybe we have to wait for them to fully cool to bite into them but like you guys are actually going to be here for the finished product for a change you're all like it's about damn time i should just eat the rest of these because it doesn't really make sense okay <sighs> This is a lot. This is like people's worst nightmare. Here we go. Let's just let's just freak everyone out right now. Here, look at this. Look at this. I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot. It's like a shot of raisins. I'm gonna just pop all these raisins. Ready? Fire in the hole. Oh well. <laughs> I just disgusted so many people. Hashtag worth it. So I just got raisin goop everywhere. me to have to use both spatulas, but it's fine because I'm going to wash both, so it doesn't matter. Like, as long as I wash all the dishes after I use all of the dishes, then it doesn't matter, right? If I want to use every single spoon in the house, as long as they're clean by the time someone needs a spoon, it doesn't matter.
Got a couple more dishes left, and then I'll check on the timer, see how it's going. You know, I had, you know how the recipe called for half an egg, so I wasn't sure what to do with the other half of the egg, and it was in this little ramekin, and you can make eggs in the microwave, so I just like nuked it for 30 seconds on and off, um, and then I ate some of it, and then I gave some of it to Shadow, but now there's a bunch of like egg residue stuck on this ramekin that I think is going to like require steel wool to remove it, so I'm just going to let it soak, just let the egg ramekin soak. Alright, where's our phone? Where's our timer? Oh, sun's back out. We doing we doing full ghost now. Full ghost mode. Ha, oh, 30 seconds now. Okie dokie, okie dokie. Until golden brown. So I think we need to check on the goldiness of it. Ooh, they bubbling. Ooh, they bubbling away. Okay. I do think they're gonna need a bit more time because they're they're not looking golden, you guys. They're not looking golden. I do think that's one of the, like, uh, oh, there we go. Stop. We should. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna flip the orientation of the pan because we do think that we have like an inconsistent oven in terms of its heating abilities. take this out of this pan because it's not necessary and it's just causing problems for me. Okay. But they're looking good. They look like butter tarts, which is good, which is what we want. Yeah. <laughs> that I don't know I don't know that reference I don't know it here let's do another five minutes see cuz I always quote song lyrics so if that's a song lyric let me check let me check I want to know I want to know what song you are singing golden brown yeah golden brown lyrics by the Stranglers. What year did it come out? Golden Brown, the Stranglers. 80s. Hmm. 
English rock band. So there could be that they never came over, or if they did, it was in the 80s. Interesting, interesting. Very cool, but I could tell that it was a song lyric. I was like, that seems like a song. Ah, <laughs> oh, can't see shit. Okay. The other thing is, like, I'm, I'm quite loving this headband, but it is pressing against my skull a little bit. Let's rearrange a little. I'm gonna put it back here so it's not pressing on my head. <laughs> one of the, uh, one of the outdoor cats in the neighborhood will perch on the garage roof opposite us. It's a good thing Shadow's not noticed him, because I'm sure he'd be freaking out right now. He just chills, he just hangs out on the roof of this garage opposite us, living his best life, staring down at his subjects in the alleyway. All right, I guess we can dry the dishes now. Dry and put them away, why not, why not, why not? Finish our tea. So a couple weeks ago, I think I told you guys, was it a couple weekends ago? Um, we went over to Liam's aunt's place because it was her birthday. And so sometimes if people like have their shit together, we know we're not gonna see each other for a while, they'll give me my birthday presents like in advance before, and then I can just open them, you know, on the actual day. So his aunt gave me the presents from her family. And so I opened them this morning and didn't we get a couple new craft kits, you guys? They're craft kits within the realm of crafts that I do. So I got a new cross stitching kit and I actually got a needle felting kit, but it's actually like a needle felted, like a flat picture cross stitch or needle felting kit. And I've ever actually done that. All the needle felting I've ever done has been 3D. And I've never actually done like almost like a needle felted painting in a way. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Cause I know we have a friend I think it's LL Cool Lib. Her introduction to needle felting was actually in these more flat picture styles. Um, so I'm gonna be attempting that uh, eventually. So that's cool. Yeah. I'm so... Yeah, that's gonna be so amazing. 10 more days, oh my God. It's coming up, eh? March has just flown by. It's gonna be so good. It's gonna be so good. Ooh, I think they're getting a little golden. Ten more days. Is there anything left that you need to do? I know obviously you have like the last minute packing for like literally going up to that. Oh, amazing. Has everything been sorted out with her? Cause wasn't it, it was uh, wasn't she got like an infection or something? because the antibiotics she was on um, obviously weren't staying down with everything else. That's so good to hear that she's coming home. Hopefully, knock on all the wood, that's the last of the having to go in and out for her. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, they're staying down now, so that should be helpful. Amazing, amazing. Now, question, because the pie, the tart shells are further down in, Jesus Christ, because the pie shells are further down in the pie, in the tart tin, so we don't have the lip of the tarts, like, pat, okay. Basically, I'm trying to figure out if we're gonna get the golden brown that we want, because the pie shell is so far into the cupcake pan. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like if the pie shell came up to the very edge of the cupcake tin, then you would get that browning on top. But there are good like few, like maybe a good like half a centimeter below the surf, like bef below the top level of the cupcake pan. So I don't know if we're actually gonna get the golden brown because it's not, it's like, protected by the pan. Do you know what I mean? Does that make any sense at all? 
<laughs> do you can you can somebody translate what I'm trying to say? Because I don't even know what I'm trying to say. They smell really good. But yeah, I don't know if we're gonna get the goldenness that we're after because they're too deep in the pan. I'm not sure though. Let's, let's take them out and I'll show you guys and you can let me know via, you know, through a camera, through the sun going down, if we think they're done. See what I mean? So this is them. And so they're not golden by any means, but they look cooked, like they look baked. I don't know. What do we think? What's the verdict? We stick them in for like two more minutes just to like really make damn sure, you know? Maybe, maybe. Let's take them in for another two minutes just so that I can read what I'm supposed to do next. I'm standing over here just because the sun is being a little bitch right now. Saul, cut it out. Just kidding. You know I don't mean you. Um, okay. Do, 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 do. Remove from the oven and allow it to cool in the pan for about five minutes. Run a sharp knife around the edge of the tart shell. So gently remove the butter tarts. Transfer to a wire rack to cool. Enjoy warm after about 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, right, my bad. <laughs> Once cooled completely, store in an airtight container. Okay, okay. Yeah, so it's just like let them cool down a little bit. Use a knife to get them out. And then they're done. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Let me put these away. I'm just gonna keep them in for like a little bit longer just to see if we can get this golden brown with which they speak of. Um, see, because I don't know, and the other thing too, right, is I don't know if golden brown isn't necessarily a universal color measurement, you know? Like what, let me just Google what golden brown is as a color. Golden brown color. Yeah, no. This is what they're telling me. But there's no, the pie crust doesn't look like that. And I don't think it wants us to look like that because if it looks like that, then I think that might be too dark. You know? Golden brown color pie. <laughs> pie crust. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. So they don't actually brown, really. Unless you put like, like a toasty brown, yeah. And see, because I think if you want to get a golden brown, you usually put like a, an egg wash on it. But because this doesn't have an egg wash, I don't think it's going to get super brown. It'll just be like whatever this last guy is, like kind of a little bit like brown around the edges.
Because we've had them in for what now? 15 minutes? So I feel like, unless our oven is so out of whack that it's not saying the advertised temperature, it's down to 375 or 190 Celsius. It was meant to be in for like 10 to 12 minutes. It's been in for 15. Stick it in for like another two. If they're not done by then, You know what I mean? Should we call it? Yeah. I think they look nice. You know, they're not like super light or anything. So yeah, fuck it. Cause as long as it's cooked all the way through, that's kind of what matters, right? I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna, just gonna, I'm gonna hide behind this. But yeah, so this now needs to cool for about five minutes and then we're gonna take a knife and go around them. But I think this is sort of like the consistency that I want. I think usually butter tarts, sometimes they have a bit more of a smooth layer on top of them, but we also put, you know, raisins in them and stuff like that. And they're not super deep. So I don't know. They look nice. I don't know. They, I feel like they look like butter tarts to me. That's what I feel in my heart and soul. We have some butter tarts, five minutes to cool. But yeah, let's Google butter tart. Butter tart. Yeah. So here's, here's some examples. So this is what I have seen sometimes, but those don't look like they have anything in them. So those ones are like, the good good sometimes yeah oh yeah they're firm absolutely yeah for sure i definitely think so but yeah and then but i feel like ours are kind of looking like like these guys maybe you know i don't think they they don't look too far off or like these guys you know i'm not mad at it Especially our, our crust, our crust is looking, I think so. Cool. Success, guys. Well, I guess we won't know until we eat them, until we bite into them, but I'm feeling pretty confident. What do you think? You're like, nah, shit. No. <laughs> You're like, I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I think we have one, there's like some seepage of this guy. I'm interested to get them out of the pans to see, um, yeah, if we have any more seepage. I think some of them maybe, I don't know. I was like, maybe the crust is too thin on some, too thick on others. I don't know. Considering I've never really made pie crust from scratch before, I'd say job well done. You know? <laughs> I would say job well done. Gotta get the flour out of this. Yeah, job, well done, exactly, right? Good job. <laughs> That's one of the, um, I'm watching a new uh, anime called Do It Yourself. And it's like about this DIY club at a, at a high school. And one of the kids is an exchange student. Like I'm assuming from like a European place because they kind of style her to look like she's like German or Swedish or something like that. And so her English is meant to be better than like her, her Japanese. 
but of course it's being voiced by a Japanese person. So one of the things that she always says is she goes, good job. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, good job. And I'm like, I think we did, good job. I can't see anything right now. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hide. I'm gonna hide down here. But yeah, it's really cute because it's part, like one of the main characters is like a super klutz and then she ends up joining this DIY club. And it's basically all these like little outcasts in the high school who end up joining this little club. And it's all about friendship and stuff. And it's fairly cute. I'm quite enjoying it. <laughs> I'm hiding. I'm hiding from Saul. I'm hiding from the sun. <laughs> okay, we've got a minute left on the timer and then we're gonna take our knife, run it around the sides and then pop these suckers out. They smell really good. You can smell the maple in them. It could also be the brown sugar or it's just the combination of the maple brown sugar that is smelling real good. And then yeah. I do wonder, and to be fair, it could be the raisins. I don't know if it is, but it'd be interesting to see if you could get the, uh, <laughs> from Lady <laughs> It's true. It's true. Yeah, there's a we we play hide and seek with each other quite a bit unintentionally <laughs> But You've been pretty good though It's been quite it's been quite fun. I'm sure you quite enjoying it. You quite like being like I've already eaten Yeah, and I'm like good for you. Check you out. Check you out adulting all over the place I'm proud of you. Adulting is hard work, man. So when we can when we can achieve our adulting tasks, I'm like, good for you. Check you out. Okay, let's take these suckers out. Let's. I can't see shit. Do 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 do. I can't see shit right now. Okay. Oh yeah, it's just gonna pop right out. Booyah. I think the broken ones are gonna not do that, but. Ho ho, yeah boy. Mm -hmm. Firm, yeah. Yeah, they're definitely solid. It's good. We got a whole we got a whole dozen out, which is nice. Yeah. I don't know why I'm tapping them all. I feel like that's just that's to signify like it's a good crust. You know? I'm like good crust. <laughs> okay. Oh, that one needs a little bit. Needed a little push. I'm also checking to see if any of them. Oh, Kodo, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what it is. No, no soggy bottoms. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah, like talking to plants. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's what it is. I'm testing to make sure because obviously it's like quite a liquid, liquid filling we've poured in and we pipe, we did some like aeration holes, but everything is held up. Though I can see the bottom. I definitely think we probably could have had more filling. I think more filling could have happened. This guy's stuck because it spilled over, but that's okay. There we go. But yeah, so this one spilled over, but it's not because of the bottom. It's because the side spilled over. Oh, there we go. But I feel like that's fine. But yeah, I definitely feel like I would almost do more filling. But I think I was also really worried about them bubbling over. And so that also made me a bit nervous as well. But, I don't know, I think that's not bad, not bad.
All right. I think all that's left to do is have them like cool down a little bit, like a little bit more. Enjoy warm after about 15 minutes or once they come to room temperature. Okay. I guess because the filling's probably like stupid hot, so we don't want that to happen. We don't need to burn our mouths on, on this. Okay. Check that out though. And we were able to make 12, which is awesome. And yeah, if none, if none of my family like raisins, to be fair though, remember when I made Nanaimo bars and I was like, oh, like, cause there was coconut in them. And I was like, oh, like Liam and his family, they're not big fans of coconut. So I don't know if they'll like them. And he said, because I use, it was like a dark chocolate on top. It was almost like there was so much going on in the base. Cause there was chocolate, almonds, the rich tea biscuits and the coconut. And then between that, and then obviously the sweetness of the custard and then the sort of like bitter sweetness of the milk, like of the um, dark chocolate, the, all those flavors sort of like over, like they were sort of overpowering. So you didn't even really taste the coconut. It almost became more of a texture thing. So I was like, that's really interesting. I do think here that you can't really avoid the raisins in this situation, but I think for people, like it's a lot of it, like the raisins, I don't know, are they like a texture thing? Raisin haters, is that is that the thing? It's more of a, because it's like a wrinkly texture, right? So again, you just spit them out or just don't eat them. But I would be interested to know if we didn't put raisins in them, if they would have come out the same in terms of like their consistency on the tops of them, or if they would have more of that smooth surface. Cause I don't think it can like break per se. I know there was a concern obviously when we put the egg in, if it was gonna sort of do like a scrambled egg thing and it didn't. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, just curious. I'm like, I'm just fascinated. Cause I don't think they turned out wrong or bad. I just know that there are like almost different consistencies in butter tarts, especially like in the filling. And so I'm just curious as like, okay, how, what would we need to change or adapt in order to get those different consistencies? I don't know. I'm wondering too, if uh, like, because we sort of carried on this doing gluten-free versions of Canadian treats, I don't actually know if there are, I'm like trying to think of other Canadian treats that I could, that I could make. Like Canadian baked goods. Baked goods. To be fair, one of the things that I do want to make is gluten-free pierogies or pierogi, and I've talked to you guys about this before. They're not distinctly Canadian. I just think that Canada has adopted them as their own because obviously when Canada was being colonized, um, different parts of Canada had different potential uses. And so in the prairies in like Alberta, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, um, the, I guess, Canadian government at the time, I don't know exactly the, the details, but they reached out to a lot of um, Ukrainian individuals because there, you know, a lot of them were farmers to basically emigrate to Canada to help build up that infrastructure because they knew that they had good soil, but all of the French and the British didn't know how the fuck to, to farm, I guess. Um, so they had, to, they had to outsource. And so a lot of like, uh, yeah, there, there was a whole influx of Eastern European immigrants to the area because they knew how to farm the land that was given, to, like that was there. So because of that, obviously there's a lot of like widespread availability of Ukrainian foods in Canada. And ergo, because that availability is there, that then translated into gluten-free versions of those things being available. They're still a bit harder to find, but you could find them. And especially now it's a lot easier. Obviously here, that's not really a thing. Though I did find pierogies in the, um, fro in the fridge section at Sainsbury's. So I keep saying these, I don't know. So they're basically like a potato dumpling. Um, sometimes they're fried, usually they're boiled. Um, and then they have, yeah, they're a dumpling and then you put a like potato filling in them and you mix it's either just potatoes and cheese or potato and bacon bits or potato and sauerkraut, those sorts of things. Um, and so I've not had them, I've not had them in the UK cause I've not been able to find them. 
And so the easiest way for me to be able to do that is to make them myself. So it might be that one of our future baking streams ends up being a like savory bake. Okay, let's see. Apparently there are 25 easy Canadian desserts. Actually, maybe I should pull that up on here. Let's pull this up on here so you guys can see it. Let me pull up. Canadian baked goods. Let's see if this works on here. Nope, not that one. This one. Mm -mm. Okay. Oh, hi, day. Thank you so much for the resub. Look at you, 13 month streak. That's incredible. Excuse me, is this not working now? There, there we go, there we go. Okay, so this is what we were gonna look at. This is what I wanted to look at with you guys. Is allegedly, 25 insanely easy Canadian desserts. We're trying to figure out if we do more baking streams and if we're continuing this like gluten-free version of Canadian baked goods. I'm only aware of the Nanaimo bar and the butter tart. So let's see if there are other things we can maybe make. Because obviously we've done the Nanaimo bar. I think we killed the Nanaimo bar. We did it. This is a no-bake version. We did a better version. Though to be fair, we kind of no-baked too, in a way. We stove-topped, we did, okay. Nanaimo bars, check that off the list. Pudding Shomir. I've never heard of this before. I guess it's a Quebec, Quebecois dessert. So that could be also, if these are maritime or French Canadian specific things, I most likely will not have heard of them. So who knows, maybe we create new, you know, things that I've never tried before. So this is a Quebec one. First of, this is a maple flavored, oh, it's a similar to a rice pudding. Okay. Warm custard with streusel topping. Okay, interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay. What's this? Oh, a Joe Louis cake. So Joe Louis is basically like, in the same vein as like Twinkies and Snowballs and Ding Dongs. So this is obviously a copycat version of a Ding Dong. So it's like not really a Canadian classic. It's like a take on a Canadian classic. So I don't count that. That doesn't count to me. Bannock bread. Okay. Bannock makes sense. So Bannock is like, um, an, in, like a, an Aboriginal kind of bread. Thing. Yeah, Bannock, it's like a type of bread. That, actually, that might be kind of interesting to try to make gluten-free. Oh, here we go. Le syrup drable tarte au sucre. Canadian maple syrup. So this is basically the butter tart, but in pie form. We could do that. We could make a, see, this was like tiny version of that. So we could definitely do the big version. I say definitely, I think possibly. We could do that, we can make a sugar pie. The Nanaimo ball, see this is not, this isn't real. This is just a take on the Canadian classic. See, I was wondering how they're gonna get 25 recipes out of here. Mm -mm. A twist on the classic, that means it's not real. You made that shit up. What's this, figgy duff. Oh, a Newfoundland thing. A Newfoundland bread. See, this reminds me of a, um, a Christmas pudding from England. This is like some British import shit right here. This is definitely a thing, but they obviously put maple syrup and stuff on it. So yeah, this is definitely like a take on that. Interesting. I have no interest in that. That looks like it's hella full of raisins though. Could use up the rest of my raisins with that. Just maple fudge. It's just maple, it's just maple flavored stuff. Here we go, here we go. See how this is the consistency? This is a consistency that I would be interested in trying to achieve with my butter tarts. I don't think we did with the filling. But maybe one day, maybe we will. 
Interesting. Yeah. Cool. What's this? Maple cookies. Again, this is just, okay, I'm getting angry. Who wrote this? Who, who wrote this article? Who wrote this article? Let's see. Hello, Kim. Um, are you actually Canadian? I feel like maybe you're not. Who's this? Who's insanely good? Let me see who this insanely good is. Where are your headquarters? Where are you, where are you located? Participant in Amazon services. That doesn't, that doesn't tell me anything. Thrive Market. Oh, affiliate programs. I don't know. I don't think they're Canadian though. I'm calling bullshit on this. I'm like, you're just finding maple flavored stuff and being like, this is a Canadian thing. It's not, it's not, I'm sorry. Like I get maybe maple flavored stuff cause we don't, what, I don't know. It's just make cupcakes, but to Canadianize them, put some maple syrup in them. Okay, I guess so. I guess so. Tar a sucre, sugar pie. So this is the same thing as before, but the original one up top was a maple sugar pie. And this is just a sugar pie. You're really grasping at straws here, insanely good recipes, I'm sorry. Puffed wheat squares. Why, why is this a Canadian thing? Are rice, were Rice Krispies invented in Canada? I don't think so. This is now a conspiracy corner. Rice, crispy squares. No, it was created by the Rice Krispie Company, I assume. Yeah, original Krispie treats. And Kellogg's is not Canadian, unless they are. Is Kellogg's Canadian? I don't think so. Kellogg's Canadian? No. <laughs> Hmm, conspiracy corner, conspiracy corner. Okay, I don't understand why puff wheat squares is on the list. I'm concerned, I don't, I call bullshit. Oh, is this a maple shaped maple cookie? Oh, wow, oh, wow. <laughs> it's like, what is it? Isn't that that Anna Wintour um, thing where it's like, oh, florals, how, how revolutionary or something like that? I'm like, oh, maple, oh, maple, really? I do think this is a thing. Molasses cookie. I could see that being. Date squares, okay. Maple glazed donuts. Peanut butter marshmallows. Interesting. That's so random to me. Is it because we didn't get Rice Krispies in Canada for the longest time? So they were like, here's puffed wheat ones? That's very strange. And then is Pubnico, is that a brand? Pubnico. Ah, there we go. Pubnico is a village in Nova Scotia. So this shit right here, these molasses cookies, that feels distinctly Canadian to me. I think we could do that. Mm, can't you advise to find substitutes using wheat? in their everyday cooking and baking. Puffed wheat. Interesting. There you go, learn something new every day. Okay. That's, sure. <laughs> okay, I like this though. I like the idea of these molasses cookies. Date squares, maple glazed donuts, peanut butter marshmallow squares, I call confuse. Those sound amazing. I love the idea of this. I maybe not because they're I feel like they're Canadian in any capacity, but just because that sounds freaking amazing. You're combining all of my favorite flavors. Fudge. More fudge. It's true. It's true. Flapper pie. Ooh, that sounds nice actually. So again, it's the custard center. So it's pie crust with custard and then meringue on top. 
That sounds pretty nice. What's a grunt? Very similar to a cobbler, but way more fruit filling than crust. Okay. This is interesting. I'm learning things. I'm learning things. Traditional Canadian fruitcake. Okay. Apparently it's time consuming, so we probably don't want to do that one. <laughs> interesting. Maple toffee. Hmm. Newfoundland snowballs. Chocolate fudge mixed with oatmeal and coconut flakes. That sounds nice. Passion flakes, that's another one that's like a Joe Louie that they've then made a version of it. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> Maple butter tart liqueur. We can do that guys, let's make flavored liqueur. That seems easy enough. Oh, it takes two weeks. I guess it, I guess we can't do that. I guess we can't do that. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Oh. Well, that was fun. We we went down a little a little rabbit hole. Shall we now? Shall we? Do we think? Is fifteen minutes been up yet? What time is it? Yeah. Let's see. Are these room temperature yet? There's, they're a little warm, but I think we should try one. Should we try one? I think we should try one. The question is which one? Probably this one because it has a lot of raisins poking out in it. And you know, I feel like people probably wouldn't choose the one with all the pokey outy raisins. All right, let's do this guys. Ready? Cheers. Oh no. The pie crust is very hard. I might have left them in for too long. But, it tastes really nice. It tastes the way I want a butter tart to taste. But yeah, the, the crust is very, it's kind of chewy. But I'm not mad about it. You know what I mean? I'm not mad about it. Oh, you heard me crunching and you came to investigate? Yeah? Well, oh, he's upside down. <laughs> Hello. You can't have this. This isn't good for shadow. No. <laughs> it's not for doggies. I can give you your own biscuit. Yeah, one second. <laughs> Hello. Where's your biscuit, say? Eh? Ooh. Where have you gone? There you are. Okay. Here, let's get you a biscuit. Get you a treat -o. Thanks for everyone your tricks. No, come here. Shadow, is this? Come here. Nope, oh, nope. Oh. Oh wow, you're already with the paw. Good boy. Sorry, Tasha doesn't know how to make the camera work. Paw? Good boy. Other paw? Oh. <laughs> Other paw? Good boy. That dew claw is really sharp. Down? Good boy. <laughs> Good boy. Spin. <laughs> Round. No. Round. Good boy. He go. He's like, bye, bitches! <laughs> okay. Well, there we go. The results are in. The verdict is here. We, gosh dang, made some butter tarts, guys. But yeah, the, the shell's a little tough, but nothing that... 
you know, some, some coffee or like whipped cream or something wouldn't fix. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, I guess, I guess that's it for today, guys. Oh, look at that dew claw scratch. Whoops, you can't tell, it's right there. Damn, we really gotta sort that out. We gotta sort that out. When he paws at you, he goes Phew. Oh yeah, interesting. And also too, they're meant to, um, they're not like fully, fully cooled. So yeah, maybe stuff will, maybe the, the texture and consistency will change over time. But yeah, not bad, not bad at all. <laughs> Yeah, what do you think? I can't let you have them. So you can't you can't see them in that capacity, but yeah. Cool, not bad. Not bad for a birthday stream. And also the first time you guys have actually gotten to see the finished creation in real time. Wowie zowie. We did it, friends. Oh, that dew claw, bud. Okay. Well. Sorry, I can't see the sun. The sun. Not too bad too. And again, we have, we're, we're at the, we got like 20 minutes, a little bit early, a little bit early. That's not too bad. Shall we see which one of our friends is currently streaming and we'll go and say hi to them. And then, like I said, we will be upstairs on Thursday, playing some games, doing some things. Ooh, Sutherland is streaming. What's he doing today? Making up fantasy characters through mashups. Pop Tart is on. Dragon Rider is on. Seabird Studio is on. Let's go see Sutherland. We we enjoy. But also, he will appreciate that I made butter tarts because he is also Canadian. So I think he will enjoy that. So let's go and see him. Oh, here, let me. I know. I know, they're so good, Shadow. I know you also want the butter tarts, but you cannot have. You cannot have, they're not for Shadow. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Just gonna, just gonna hang, again, I'm gonna enjoy my sushi. That's what I'm most excited for, <laughs> is sushi time. Okay, hang on, did I, did I actually copy this? Let me copy this. I know you wanna go, I think you don't actually wanna go outside of Shadow, you're just deflecting right now. I think that's what's happening. All right, so we will see you guys back over here, but upstairs <laughs> to play some more strange horticulture. All right, let's go and raid Sutherland and I will see you guys later, bye.